and we are live okay everybody um thank you for um sticking with us for those of you that will find your way here eventually um we had a bit of technical difficulty um so we have gone for that's a polite. different that's a, that's a polite way yeah <laughs> technical yeah. difficulty is the super polite way of putting that we messed up big time um so we hope you can obviously move past that and join us on this new stream so we'll give people a, li a little moment to catch up maybe um all right i'm going to just find the actual stream yeah it goes take two we're live brilliant pause that and we have got it says we've got 24 people watching there we go sounds much better everyone says as well so there we go a lot better that's good news it's not all my fault i just want to address all the people in the last chat who were cursing me and making all sorts of Scottish Scottish jokes. And, oh, and saying, really? Yeah, it was <laughs> awful. I was reading them all. All your names are noted. A Southwest seller says, has ads been teaching you, Z? Um, <laughs> uh, so I'm guessing that's because of the, the, um, the, the streams that went up live on ads channels yesterday. Yeah, no, this is, we're going to have to figure something out. Um, about how to do the like using the um, other program in the future, but at least we're looking and sounding a lot better. Anyway, let's get back to the the actual point of this. I'm really happy to have David on the channel because it's, actually this is the first time I've had a guest, so I'm going to have to learn this thing where I actually stop talking um, and let someone else talk because I know that I'm always cutting Nick off all the time in our chats. Um, so I've got to make a concerted effort to to let the guest have their say so as we were as we were a bit of background about yourself how, how you got into this etc okay yeah so yeah. been reselling for uh, about three years and uh it's doing it on a part-time basis i i touched more briefly on that last little chat that i had um i do about one and a half day a week reselling when i kind of total up the hours so it was a very part-time i I should explain because I'll probably touch upon it later in the chat. My main business is, revolves around um, I sell TV and film merchandise. I do that online as well as selling at events and comic cons and traveling to um, different places on the weekend, that sort of stuff. And so this, so reselling is just a, a kind of like a small part of the income stream of a larger business that, that I do. And uh, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There's a nice quick intro for you. No, definitely. Um, I, there's an echo coming through. I don't know if I, anyone can. Is that okay? I don't know. I'll, I'll speak further away from the mic, maybe. Okay, so that's quite interesting. So you're actually fitting your reselling around your main business. Um, and like, how many systems or what kind of systems have you got in place to actually do that? I mean, um, and, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, how does that affect your reselling business? So uh, how long have you been running your eBay shop? Um, you know, how many listings do you keep active? Is that affected by the, obviously, by the, how busy you are yeah. with your main? Yeah, it is massively affected. The Because the main part of my business is my main business. That's where I get most of my income from. Um, so eBay, um, I, I don't sell on FBA. Um, I, I tried it for a little while, but ditched it. So I, I, I just sell on eBay. But that unfortunately has to go up and down as as the peaks and troughs of my main business. So when I'm really busy in that, I have to kind of cut back on eBay. Um, and then when I've got time, I can ramp it up. Um, but I normally sit around about between sort of five and 700 listings. And that's not that's not a conscious effort to keep it at a certain number. That that's that's just where it is. Um, I kind of always kind of hover around around that. But I, I don't really have any systems in place. It's I I try and we've got I work with my wife and we've got um, me and Joe have got quite a good little system in terms of you know I do postage every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's like my set days. I never do it on Tuesday, never do it on a Thursday, never do any on a weekend. So I've got set days that I do postage. Um, I've got set days that I go out to charity shops. That sort of, so they're kind of little systems I've got in place um, for, for the reselling part of the business. And it seems to work quite well um, for the most part. Okay, so, so would you say, um, 
like you said you, you touched on that you work with your wife there as well um, um if you could give us a bit of background like your your setup because obviously i i am yeah. some of some people know that you don't actually work from home you have like a, a unit yeah. um yeah. is she there with you now and no no she's not um so yeah what we've got is i've got um i've got my own office it's like a kind of ground floor in a kind of office building and so with it my office consists of like seven different rooms it's almost like seven different offices cool um they're all mine and i've sort of converted them into different things so i've got like a kind of reception area i've got my office which i'm in now which is where i work from i've got an ebay room which is all my ebay stock i've got a convention room for all my convention stock i've got a photography room with my light set up and um my my sheets and all that sort of stuff my mannequins and then i've got a, post, a little postage and packaging room um you know a gaming room because uh, i do retro gaming stuff as well so i've got lots of different rooms for different things so when my so joe currently works three days a week um with the yeah. business and then she's, she's going to be going up to full time uh later in the year as i get busy near christmas so it's three days a week at the moment so we've got a good system for this so we have no reselling no work stuff at home at all but we've got a kind of set rule on that nothing nothing comes into the house so that's all completely clear like you would walk into our house and not know that that we had a kind of reselling business or you know an, an event business or anything like that so we when stuff comes in to our office it it goes reselling wise goes to a very set process like so say if i've been out to the charity shop stuff comes in it goes it gets logged joe does all the logging of stuff we've got stuff that we log everything receipts all get filed away it then goes to a photography room um, where there's like shelves and stuff there and then that stuff gets everything gets photographed and then put away into the ebay stock room like labeled and organized in certain sections it's all it all this all sounds very military like it's all but it, it's a process that we've done and it keeps everything efficient and it means that all our stock at all time is photographed which is quite a good thing really because it means i never have a pile of shame in terms of a physical pile we, what we do is once we've done all the photography we put all the photos onto a folder on the computer so my pile of shame is a folder on the computer with all the photos of it does that make sense it does but it's funny that you just said that you know you, you don't have processes in place but you kind of inherently, yeah, well, yeah. You, you inherently as you were talking about it you were thinking actually i do have lots of processes yeah. in place is that something yeah. that's come from like a previous career or is that um just the way you guys just generally are it, it it's had to be that way i'm so busy with my my normal business that for ebay um to work for me um, it had to be, uh, we had to have a set process. Otherwise, it would be too, you know, having piles of stuff everywhere and not having everything on. It would be too time consuming. It'd be all over the place. And it probably wouldn't be as worthwhile as it is. We've got it kind of efficient. So it's kind of worked quite well. Joe's helped with that as well. When Since she came onto the business, she's nailed the organization side of it. Um, I was kind of all over the place. But okay. she just came in and she's put some set process. Like we've got very set jobs as well. God, I do have a lot of processes, don't I? <laughs> like I'm just think. Like I didn't when you said that. Like I didn't think I did, but now I'm just hearing myself say this stuff. Yeah, like she does. She does all the. She does all the photography. I do all the listing. You know, and then we've got. I do all the posting and parceling on a Monday and Wednesday, and she does it on a Friday. That's like the opposite. Just, just like edit that little first comment out. Just yeah, I've got I mean, a, lot of a, a lot of comments coming through about that. Nick and, and Nick is in the chat as well. Nick and Andrea says, uh, "How holy cow, you guys are organised." Um, you know, so um, Al's attic is seriously impressed as well. Um, uh, some people are kind of touching on the fact that you don't ship every day because they're they're, yeah. they're asking each other, you know, what what the consensus is. I suppose as long as your handling time um, yeah. for for your shipping is set up, you know, appropriately, you don't have to 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 ship, ship every day. day. We do. We don't have to because we've got a one day handling time. Um, so we we could technically leave something, but if something sells and we're at, before we're on our way to the to the shipping place, we just take it down there. It doesn't harm. Um, and it's down the road as well, so it becomes like a bit of a bit bit of a habit. Um, 
okay, moving on from what you said there. So, you know, we've seen that you guys have actually got quite a, a serious uh, process there to keep it, but to keep it in check alongside your main business, which is understandable. Um, now, and you said you keep about five to 700 listings, um, which is also quite impressive actually, because um, you know that's a lot of full-timers have that kind as well. I mean, you're smashing mine at the moment. I think I'm on about 200 and something. Yeah, so. it's, it's not five to yeah. 700 quality listings yeah. though, but, but that's for sure. Well, it, the same, mine aren't even 200 quality listings, but that's the thing, I mean, um, would you want to just go into um, yeah. what you why like to up. sell the most um, and why you went into that? I mean, what was behind your decision? Um, I talk a lot about, you know, being passionate about what you sell and I get the feeling you're like a lot more pragmatic. Yeah, um, I, I, I stay away from certain niches. I that That's probably the better. I, I will pick up anything, anything that I think I'm going to make money on, like most resellers probably will. Um, however, I mainly stick to clothes and toys and um, media, and I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of bundles. We we were chatting about this the other day. Um, I, I it it fits in with my kind of business process of of not having the time to do certain things. So I I, I bundle a lot of stuff up: DVDs, books, um, even clothes. You know, you know if I've got five shirts that are all size large and they're not selling or they've been sitting about you know if they all look like work shirts i'll shove them together and, and get shot up in that way um, but yeah ma mainly clothes toys and it's stuff from charity shops that's that's the other thing and that some people won't know i don't i don't do car boots I, I, I never go to car boots i only source from charity shops and and on occasionally online on gumtree and stuff so it's um, I'm kind of limited in that sense to the kind of stuff you normally get in charity shops. Sure. Okay. And um, you, your kind of pragmatic approach to it is it just because is it because you only source at charity shops mainly that that you've kind of focused in on those niches because that's what you tend to find a lot of. You know, obviously you find a lot of clothes. Um, you do find media and toys. Um, yeah. So was it kind of just from that really? Nah, it was. Yeah, I guess so, because what what I found is because I work most weekends, so I don't have a chance to go to the car boot, although even even if I did, mine starts at like 6 a.m. on a Sunday, so F that, do you know what I mean? You're like, not that kind of person, huh? Nah, if I've got a rare weekend off, the last thing I want to do is um, get up at, you know, half five on a Sunday, That that's that's not for me, um, although I do, I do know that that's like, if I was to ever do it full time, I would have to go start going to car boot, start going to um, start, you know, dabbling in FBA, that sort of stuff, open up all the avenues. But I think going back to your question was it was I could only really source from charity shops. So what I did is I would go into charity shops and I initially started looking for, for the stuff that I knew about, you know, so whether it be video games or DVDs or toys and stuff like that. And then you quickly realize that there's, not that much of that stuff out that you really want to pick up and I've got to start looking at other areas. So rather than going into, you know, going to a car boot or, or looking at other places to source stock, what I did was I said, right, okay, I've got this charity shop here. What can I get from this? And r rather than, so almost like kind of flipping it around and saying, right, what is here? So I started looking and I, I just go into charity shops and I start taking photos of a whole bunch of stuff. I don't even know what it is. Like I think I was telling you before, I go down the clothes rail, and then that's how I started getting into clothing. I would go down the men's clothes rail, and I would just flick through it in video or take photos of all the labels, ones that didn't have a clue on any of them. And then I would go home, and I would go through them, and be all right, okay, that's Asda, that's Matalan, that's whatever. Oh, that's a good brand. That's a good brand. That's a good brand. Next day, I'd go in and get them if they were still there, and then that's logged in the head. Or then I would start photographing the bookshelves, you know, and then I'd have a photo that at home I can take more time and study and see, oh, you know, that's, you know, that series of books is worth picking up or this is worth. And I almost forced myself to make the best use of the sourcing that was available to me, which for, for me mainly is kind of my, like my local four or five charity shops. 
and that's pretty i mean that in itself is pretty impressive i mean chrissy in the chat has said that's a good idea I, I often forget names and it actually shows your kind of pragmatist um coming through your personality there because that is such an um, efficient way of learning knowledge i mean I, one of my questions was going to be about like your your views on educating yourself and methods and gaining knowledge and i've got to say that has to be one of the most unique ways i remember you telling me about that yeah. and i was i was kind of like you know like mind yeah. blown. And, and the um, thing is for for clothes especially it's so easy so you've got your standard charity shop clothes rail right you hold hmm. your phone put it on video mode on you know on one hand and then just go through the rail and film you know and that's you done in 30 seconds and then you've instantly got a video of you know whatever 40 50 brands um and then you go wild and, and and it's also like a realistic um idea as well isn't it because you're you're, you're studying like a a real life case study almost of 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 what there was yeah. at that charity shop yeah um, and that, sometimes what i do is i'll do that i'll take photos or videos of certain things in charity shops certain areas of the charity shop and then i'll just go you know go and get a coffee you know with a bit of paper and go through it and be like right okay so you know and then head back you know half an hour later and and pick up stuff um, you know, and uh, yeah, you're right. It comes down to that kind of efficiency, making sure I'm getting the best value for my money. I mean, I'm always still going to pick up duds, and there's always times when, I, if I'm in a rush or I don't have time to do that, I'll still go with my gut instinct. Do you know what I mean? I'll still, if there's something that I see that I think, do you know what? That's a good chance. That's quality. I'm going to pick it up. I'm not, you know, I I do try and make the most of my kind of practice and the way that I do things. But at the end of the day. To be a reseller, to be a successful one, you've got to have that gut instinct. That I think um, every successful reseller has. And you know, I'm not. You know, if I see something I know is worthwhile, I'm, I'm picking it up regardless. Um, actually, I want to touch on something with that because you obviously talked about like your gut instinct there about being a reseller. Um, yeah, your views on. Uh, you know like we've I've, I've often talked about reselling is like a lifestyle for a lot of people like you know living like the reseller lifestyle in in the sense that you thrift everything and um you know even the clothes that you wear or, or the goods that you have around your home there that they can be from the same thing um what's your stance on on that kind of I, thing i mean i'm the opposite i i feel bad sometimes when i you know and i know ads is in the chat and i'm not i'm not having a go at my kerching club buddy you know, but when you say, no, I'm going to be reselling for life, you know, and I'm going to be doing it until I'm all sorts of age. And I can, that is not for me at all. It's, I'm all about the money. Do you know what I mean? It's, for me, it's a job. And yes, don't get me wrong, right? I love reselling. I love finding stuff. I love researching it. You know, I, I love selling it. I do love reselling. But at the end of the day, it's a business and it's an income stream. And I'm going to treat it like that. And um, it's, I'm fortunate that it's a great income stream in the sense that I can ramp it up or bring it down or fit it around other parts of my business. And you've got that um, luxury of doing that, which is why it's such a, um, a great thing for people who are working full time, looking for extra cash or are only doing it part time. It's a type of job that everyone can do from home. You know, as long as you've got the, the kind of work, the work ethic and the will to actually learn and do it properly. And anyone can kind of pick it up and uh, you know do bits and pieces it's whether you're committed to it or not so um yeah it, it's kind of it's fitted in really well tactical bite saying someone in business just for the money outrageous um i, I think that's something that definitely is unique almost to the to the like the reselling community where there's a lot of us out there that kind of live live the whole reselling thing but for you it does stop at the um stop when you when you go home as it were you just and, and yeah. you just see it as an income stream and and saying that if you did then come across another income stream which was was going to demand the time that reselling took but offered greater rewards you'd have no trouble just dropping the whole reselling thing and, yeah. and when i say reselling i mean by you know going to charity shops that kind of reselling uh, and you just drop it without any yeah, it would get it would get ditched, and and, and that that does happen to an extent because I do go through periods. I remember I was chatting to Adj on a on a live stream about this. I think it was in um, I had a really really busy March with my own business, and I didn't do a single eBay thing in the whole of March. I didn't do um, I didn't do any pickups. I didn't do any listings. 
um, you know, nothing apart from my stock that was already listed and clicking relist. That that was it. Um, and because for March, my own main business was taking far more money and demanding far, far more time than what I would do through reselling. So it has to it has to take a back seat. And the, the, you're right. If something else came along that was going to make me more money, um, and it is important. I have to enjoy it. Um, I, I sound like what's his name, Scrooge McDuck here, like just just all about the money. But I do have to enjoy it. I would never do a job that I don't enjoy. My wife went through it for years. She was working in retail. And she was coming home every day. Oh, this is rubbish. This is rubbish. You know, this person did this today. Oh, waking up in the morning, I can't be arsed going to work. That's my idea of hell. Like, oh, I, I couldn't. Couldn't do that. Um, it, yeah, it has to be something I enjoy. But if it was something that I enjoyed and it was making me more money, then see you later to reselling. I'll still watch your videos, OZ. Wow, you 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 heartless man. No, not at all, not at all. Um, it, it's it's a smart way to be. Um, actually, just touching on that, you you've obviously mentioned Joe, your missus, that she's yeah. she's coming on board with this more and more. Um, was that directly as a result of 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 you seeing the potential of the of of the income you can earn through reselling, and you kind of converted her? Is that the right way, or mm. or do you think it's just? I think it was like, a bit of both. She um she was made redundant from her own job um back in uh, like July last year and uh, it was a good thing like because I'd say she hated the job and I hated her working there so it was a good thing um you know she got a decent payout from it and it got to that stage where she was looking for another job but she was looking for a job that she liked and um and it got to a few months and then she just sort of naturally came on board and started helping out. And then she kind of liked it, and she liked she she likes the lifestyle more than anything, because she she doesn't have the, and she won't mind me saying this, but she she doesn't have that eye to be a proper reseller, and she would never do it on her own. No, but she wouldn't. She wouldn't. She's not. That, look, she won't watch this anyway. I'm cool, um, but she she wouldn't do it on her own. Like it's not something she would ever. If I wasn't here, she would not do it on her own. She doesn't. She doesn't mind. She likes doing all the parts. Like I say, she likes doing the photography and the admin side of things. And she will do pickups, but she's much more. She's. I remember you you chatting about when Bex first came on board, and she would check with you on almost everything she bought, and uh, she just didn't have that confidence. And um, I think Jo is very much at that stage. She's been doing it a few months now, but she's she just doesn't have that. If, if I would give her a list of stuff, which I have done in the past, I've said, look, you know, if you see any of you know these games or any Mario games or you know these brands of clothing or whatever, yeah, you know, if they're this price, pick them up. And she's quite happy to work off that, but she doesn't. I don't think she likes reselling as such but she likes the lifestyle she likes the money if that makes sense right right no, no, completely um th there's a rumor building quickly in the chat that you are actually scrooge mcduck i think it was started by darren saying that you jump into a pile of coins every evening um and i think it's moved on to lisa saying you probably bathe in paper money whilst drinking champagne too i've never seen scrooge mcduck do that in an episode yet um unless it's one i've missed <laughs> That's brilliant. Who was that? Darren. Yeah, Darren. Darren says you're jumping into pile of money. I always remember that at the beginning of Ducktales. Um, okay, um, <laughs> we've actually got 67 people watching. So thank you everyone for joining us. I um, just want to say hello to everyone that's joined us in the chat. Um, if you've just popped in, um, we are with David McGregor. Um, well, I am with David. we. What the hell? Um, okay, I'm here chatting to David McGregor. Um, he's a fantastic guy. He's, he's shared a fair bit about his um, his his journey so far into reselling and what he enjoys about it. Um, something a bit more kind of simple in terms of question: What would you say is your biggest reselling success to date? I think. Do you know what? I think this is going to sound cheesy. Right. I, I keep trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to avoid swearing. Um, anyone who's seen some of our videos know this is cheesy as, but it's, I think my biggest success is 
being able to fit the whole eBay reselling into, as you will, a, you know, a process as something that I enjoy is efficient and is making money. You know, I can dedicate a little time to it, and it, it, it's still it still become a viable income stream, you know, to the point where it's not guaranteed money every month. But I know from looking at figures now that I've been doing it for, you know, two or three years, I know that every month, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much guaranteed a kind of, you know, between this figure and this figure. So it's, I think, I think that is my biggest success, being able to take it to the point where I knew literally nothing to the to the point where um where it is now and it's uh and, and it, right it is hard work as well it's not i mean i know everyone i know you say this quite a lot and other people that it's not an easy job that people think it is it's it takes a lot of work and, and a lot of research as well you know the number of times i've spent you know trying to increase my knowledge just by sitting going you know picking a random category on ebay and going through the sold listings you know, sorting from highest to lowest and, and just looking for stuff that will remember, you know, trigger. So I think it, it's that discipline to keep going and wanting it to be a success. Sorry, that's cheesy. Um, I, 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 I don't actually think that's cheesy at all. I think it's, um, it's, it, it's, it's, quite a, it is an achievement like you said it's not easy to build 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 it up from reselling secondhand goods that most people let's face it everything that you sell for profit as a consumer out there has has gone from buying it new to then seeing it as worthless and and hence seeing it only fit for the charity shop um so to to make money from that kind of stock um I think it should speak for itself. I, I think sometimes it is a bit too easy when when you can come on and and make a video saying oh, I paid pound for this and sold it for sixty or fifty or whatever. Um, and I think that can sometimes um, give like a skewed impression of it. So I don't think that's a cheesy answer. Um, what would you say is your biggest fail to date? Then just opposite to that. Yeah, I mean, I, like any any reseller says, if not ad fails, is is talking out there, um, behind. Um, <laughs> it's just, I mean, I, the, what I do is I do a lot of job, I pick up a lot of job lots, especially with um, doing retro gaming and as a kind of time constraint, I will pick up lots of job lots of, you know, household stuff, or job lots of toys, figures, gaming, stuff like that. And you have to pay quite often a high amount. And uh, there's been a number of them. I Even just two months ago, there was an ad on... It was a local ad on Facebook, and it was there was a couple of grainy photos, and it was someone who was like, they what? There was like bags and bags of clothes, and uh, it, there was some video game stuff, and action. But I think the fo the photos were so rubbish that it almost looked worth a punt. It, I think they were asking like 120, and um, I ended up getting it for 100, but it was. There was loads and loads of it, and I could, you know, that way where you, sometimes you can almost like see like a carrier bag, and it look, you see like one action or two action figures like hanging out the sides of it, and you think, oh, this is going to be, it just looks ram full of, of other stuff, <laughs> and I, 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 and so I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a punt in that, and I, and I got it home, and it, ninety five percent of it was utter tripe, it was, it was nonsense, it was, all, not all, nearly all the clothes. Were um, were rubbish supermarket brands, and the ones that had names were all fakes, like pretty much all fake, really bad ones as well. Um, the video games, like there was a big stack of SNES games, and I thought, um, you know, they were all like sports titles or totally cracked, and it was just the the whole thing was was nowhere. Near, I mean, out of out of everything, I maybe listed about three or four things. Um, wow. um yeah 120 pound and uh, well 100 pound and i uh, guaranteed i made about an 80 quid loss in that but you, you've got to go for these things like i i can i can count on you know one hand the amount of times i've made that kind of loss do you know what i mean when you think about all the times you make so much money every day at charity shops or car boots that do you know what i mean you're making money 99 percent of the time so uh, yeah everyone does fail and and I have fails, you know, quite often. But it's just it's one of those things. I just I, I don't let them get to me. It's just like, nah. Oh well, 
move on to the next thing. Um, I think that's quite a, a nice thing to share there because I think, you know, like you said, you often have to pay up for the bundles and the job lots as well. But like with so many things in life, it is so much about risk and reward, isn't it? I mean, even if you're someone that that dabbles on, on stocks or something, if, if you're only willing to go like halfway in, you're never going to make the, the, the same kinds of you might not lose as much if things go wrong, but you'll never win as much if things go right either. And same applies to, to when you're buying stock as well. It's, um, you know, um, Nick's just put in the chat. Yeah, falling is part of, failing is part of growing and learning, embrace it and move on. And, you know, I've definitely had the same situation where I've spent money on something thinking it's going to be great and it, and it's turned out not to be. Um, but then again, some of my biggest risks have also turned into like the biggest rewards as well. Um, so yeah, that, that's, um, yeah. I think it's important just re reading the next comment there that it, it's you do have to learn from it and i think what a lot of people are scared of is is failing and then avoiding completely so for if i saw that listing again i'd probably go for it mm. do you know what i mean because you know nine times out of ten i'll you know it'll have been successful you know and yeah you're always going to get rubbish fails but i think there's a lot of people especially on reselling especially starting out you hear this all the time. People that pick up board games, they'll have watched Nick's videos. They'll have picked up a stack of board games, and then they start moaning that they're not, um, they're not selling, and they're not, um, or they're really slow or, or slow shifting, and then they just won't touch board games again, or they'll, 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 they'll dip into a category. It's not worked, and then they've just ditch it completely. Yeah, yeah, you might have failed that time picking up those board games, but look at which ones do. Look at when they sell. Look at, you know, it's. It's not just about failing and then ditching completely. It's about learning your mistake and would you do it again? Would you, you know, what could you have done differently? That sort of thing. Definitely. Um, there's actually quite a nice little question um, from uh, Doing It Yourself Lifestyle. He asks, um, what's the dream? Can I say, by the way, yeah. Brian, Doing It Yourself Lifestyle, he's great on Instagram. I can't remember what his exact handle is, but over the last few months, he's done lots of Insta stories. Um, and he's absolutely killing it. So just wanted to give a shout out to Ryan there. Yeah, I've started following Ryan actually, um, but I'm so bad at Instagram. I keep, I sometimes I have to ask Rebecca, like, how do I find, you know, a notification and stuff? I'm so just cack at it. Um, but yeah, he's got a great question. Like, what's um, what's the dream for reselling for you guys? So, I mean, that's leads on to the question that, you know, if, for example, his goal is to pay off, um, you know, if, my goal for example is to pay off um pay mortgage off um so it's it, it kind of leads on to a question i had that you know what motivates you and i said to you if i ask you you know what motivates you i don't want you to say something like to pay the bills all the because, money all the money yeah yeah it's, you know like what gets you out of bed but seriously like you know what, what what's your um main reason for for working as hard as you do at not just reselling but your main business and just generally you know what? I think it's to live a lifestyle that I'm happy with, where I don't need to um, scrimp and save. And I don't want to, like, for instance, I don't want to, you know, see a new gaming console, um, you know, in the shop and be like, oh, I really want that. Oh, it's going to have to wait until the end of the month or I'm going to have to wait. I don't want that. I want, and I don't even want to be, I don't even want to be rich. Well, of course I do. But do you know what I mean? Like I don't I just want to be comfortable where you've always got where you've got time to do the things that you love and you've got the money to do the things that you love. If I can get to that stage, then that would be that would be brilliant. And in terms of eBay specifically, and I, I've said I said this to someone before on a chat once, I can't remember which one, but I'd love to get it so that my eBay was as passive as possible for me while I maintain the bits that I love. So if I could only just do um, the pickups and getting the money from them, then I would do that. And I'm fortunate that I'm in an office, so I can, I'm can. i in the position where I, I might be able to hire someone to come in part-time. Um, you know, I do the pickups, and I, I, I think you can train someone to photograph. It, it, it's different if it's in your own home. But I think if you're in an office environment, the people... And a lot of people say, oh, you can't train people to do eBay and stuff. I, I think you can, can train someone to photograph items. I think you can train someone to, to package them and probably list them as well. You know, even if they're just doing all the drafts and you're checking them over. 
Um, but the, the main bit for me, I love the bit of research I love the most is going out and, and finding this stuff and then selling it, obviously, and getting the money. So if I could just keep that and have the rest sort of all, like managing it almost, that's that, that's my eBay dream. I don't want to do the rubbish bits. I, I know you love postage and packaging and stuff like that, but I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to be you know, photographing stuff. It's not my passion. So that's really <laughs> cutthroat, isn't it? Um, well, no, I think I think it it's also what separates um, someone that's got like that business building spirit in them as well. Because the the things that you're talking about, like you know, the automation, uh, you know, getting rid of the bits that you don't want to do, are also the same things w that will allow you to, I suppose, scale things up to a level that you need to to provide you with the lifestyle that you're looking for as well. Um, again, that's not going to be for everybody. Uh, like you said, especially as a lot of resellers are going to be doing. Um, what they do from home so they're not necessarily going to be comfortable having someone come over but um, but I suppose it comes down to your mentality and, and what your end game is because you know office space etc can be worthwhile I mean I, I've often thought if I had like a small unit to go to and work I, th I reckon I'd be so much more productive um, than, than I am at home just by not being at home um, so you know those things are quite um, it's costly though Geez, like the, the rent you have to pay uh, on an office and then business rates and, and stuff like that as well. Mm. It's, uh, it, but you have, again, for me, that was a case of weighing up. Yes, it's going to cost me, you know, X amount a month. But the benefits from that um, are, you know, we've got the house free now. We have a place that we go to work and then it gets left there and comes back. And and yes, we could. I could probably squeeze my whole business. It'd be tight, but I could probably squeeze it into my house, you know. But then, am I going to have room to expand? Am I going to have the same lifestyle? Um, no, it's going to cost me X amount a month to have that lifestyle, and I'm fine with that because that's the kind of. What's your dream anyway? What's the dream? My dream. Oh God. Um, I think our dream would be to be able to actually own a house at some point. I know we talked about this, but yeah, yeah. at some point I would like to be able to own one, but like outright comfortably, you know, that would be epic. Um, and you know, just like I think, like yourself, I'd love to just have some level of financial freedom. You've got to have. I, I believe in having like out there dreams. So you know, I do dream of having like you know a supercar at some point even now, even though I'm like 36 and, and life is slowly ebbing away, you know, I'm still, you still have to dream um, because if you don't, then it, it just it takes away a lot of the motivation, I think, to do things like that. Yeah, um, I'm fulfilling one of my dreams this next year. I'm right. going to WrestleMania. Oh, see now that, I, I hadn't even thought of that kind of dream. Now that is it. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, I'm going. I'm going to WrestleMania next year. The tickets aren't out yet, but I've I've been saving and I have a block of money set aside. It's in New Orleans, and oh, right. uh, it's it, it it's it's probably not worth the money. It's ridiculously expensive. But do you know what? I've never been. I've always wanted to go. Such a spectacle. Um, going out there for you know four or five days. You know, doing the whole um, WrestleMania, the Raw, the SmackDown, the Hall of Fame, all that all that sort of stuff. Um, they're the little, I'm fortunate at the moment I don't have kids so that kind of thing I can you know I've got a bit of leeway where we can afford to do that kind of stuff so Darren's actually reminded me of a few of the things uh, <laughs> pro skateboarder up. yeah pro skateboarder would be epic yeah I'd love to do that um, and yeah I'd love to actually be able to fly my RC helicopters let alone a real one um, so, and Southwest Ellis says building the Northwest Premier RC racing circuit I'd love to do that as well actually it's, what's, um, what's, the, what's the update on the skateboarding? Are you still doing it? No, I'm too fat. Um, it just doesn't work. <laughs> just, I, I need to. I think I need to sort that out before I can and do it before I do myself some damage because my balance just isn't like it used to be. I used to be all right at it. I could do like basic skateboarding. I, I, and I, for some reason, I decided to get on one, and then no, 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 that's that's been shelved. Um, what else have we got here? Um. Little question here, advice, um, what advice, one piece of advice would you give to someone who's starting out um, like, like today? And and that could be, I think with your your personal situation, I'd say just personal advice on someone that's starting out to wanting to be an entrepreneur today rather than just a reseller. Mm, I think we touched upon it briefly there, be prepared to fail. 
because you will you'll fail over and over and over again before before you become a success and even when you do become a success you will then still have failures and it's just it's just, sorry this sounds like such cheesy corporate crap but it's it's true it's you know what i mean you've got to for anyone starting out you've got to be prepared to fail the stuff you do isn't going to work straight off the bat you're going to struggle for a while like you know when i when i first started my business we had before i started it i had to make sure that my wife at the time when she was working full time she had we'd say right she had to have like six months of we had to have six months of savings that would cover my full time income in case because my business isn't going to be making a profit for the first you know x amount of months so and then you've got to put provisions in for failing whether that's having savings whether it's um you know looking at and analyzing what you've done and how you've how you've done it, you've got to be able to to look at why you failed, not just you got to when you fail, realize that you failed, but not just as I said, not just kick it to the side. You've got to realize why you failed and whether it's something you can approve on and you've got to keep going. Like the amount how many people start reselling? I mean you see it in the the, the Facebook group, they start reselling and they're all in for a, a month or two and then then they ditch it again and it's you know it's and, and you can apply that to not just reselling. I mean, you see so many people starting, you know, so many different things. Um, I can give myself an example of like a diet. How many times have I started a diet or I've said I'm not going to drink any more Coke and then I give up. Um, and But then there's other things that I have stuck at, such as like the reselling or, or such as making YouTube videos or whatever, like building a YouTube channel or anything like that. Um, you know, you can keep going, can't you, if you if you're determined enough, I suppose. Um, all right. One other thing, because we're now down to like um, the well, we're down to like last ten minutes. So it's been nearly an hour. Um, wanted to talk about your plans um, about the um, about a potential. There's nothing um, concrete yet, um, but but David has got like a, a background in like um, event planning. Is that right? Or you, you... yeah, well. <sighs> Yeah, I used, back when I was, uh, this is going back maybe 10, uh, 10 15 years ago, I, I used to work in uh, for a hotel chain, and we used to, obviously, we used to put on, like, weddings and um, shows and all that sort of stuff. So that that, that was kind of started me off, and I got into, you, you obviously had there's so much planning um, in conference and events, and I was involved heavily in that kind of side of things. And then with my own business now, for the last few years it's become very heavy in logistics like the amount of planning and organizing i have to do uh, because i i sometimes run you know three or four events on at the same weekend and i've got to have staff at them all make sure all their travel and accommodation and make sure the stops get in there and couriers are arriving on time and there's so much planning so i've been doing it for a few years now and uh, it's one of those things where do you know what i think do you know, i'm pretty good at this actually the whole like logistics and organizing things i can think i can i can pull together one two and get this right see when i got married it was me doing all the organizing wow I, so you I were the wedding planner pretty much not that i really liked doing it but it was you know i i knew that i could organize you know and and, and do that kind of thing properly um but yeah touching upon what you were saying so yeah. this is very there, there's nothing concrete yeah. This is there's no date, there's no location, anything like that. But what I kind of have planned is that at some point in 2018 there'll be a UK, I guess, a reseller meetup. I don't want to call it a reseller rally. That's very American, isn't it? Um, it, it is, but it's I suppose it's like the reference. rally in this country, yeah. do they? <laughs> not do really. They? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> not in that context. No. Um, so yeah, a UK reseller meetup, and the idea is that it will probably be, and um, this is all in my head how I see it, and I do have a little layout, and I've got a few notes that I've got. They would kind of be in a big kind of, big kind of, I imagine like a kind of hotel ballroom or huge big kind of conference center, that kind of thing. Um, it would be the cost, and I'd be aiming to keep it pretty cheap, enough to cover the venue and lunch for everyone, that kind of thing. So it'll probably work out, I don't know, twenty quid, thirty quid ahead, tops. 
that's it. It's the, the first one. Um, despite everything I've just said in the chat, I'm not. You know, I wouldn't be looking to make money out of it. Um, <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe in future years, but no, it's not. It's not that kind of thing. It's basically. I love reselling the reselling community. It's about getting people together in the one place and learning from it. And the way that I see it is that there would be a number of guest speakers at this um, thing. And when I say guest speakers, I don't just mean um, resellers themselves. Which, yeah, it'd be good. I, you know, it would natural. We have a few resellers, you know, sharing their stuff, doing some, you know, live stuff on stage. But I also think it'd be good. I know that you, um, eBay and Amazon both have. UK teams and representatives that actively go out to speak to sellers in the UK. So I think it'd be great to have, you know, reps from eBay and Amazon there to to share stuff or to answer questions. I think that would all be quite worthwhile. Um, I've I'd already spoke to a few. Um, they're like I guess they're called sales managers, sales reps from big charities like uh, whether uh, Oxfam, British Heart Foundation, um, Age UK, that sort of stuff. And, you know, so these are people at a kind of corporate level, and I think it'd be great to get them in and, you know, get their opinion because they're really far. They love resellers. You know, when people say, you know, people in charity shops, the people who don't like resellers tends to be, the, you know, the kind of volunteers sometimes aren't, you know, too keen on it. But, you know, from a kind of management level up, um, charity shops love resellers. So I think it'd be good to get some UK representation from, you know, kind of charity shops and, and how they view resellers, how they price things, you know, how resellers go about. If you want to go into your char local charity shops and, you know, get a look in the back or, you know, have a list of stuff that they look out for you, you know, how they kind of view that. And I think that would be quite interesting. Um, and as well as guest speakers, um, I'd like to have, um, like, almost like kind of workshops. Do you remember telling you about this? So I imagine like different parts of the hall or in different parts of the hotel, they'd, they'd be kind of running little different workshops um, for um, resellers to attend. And, you know, they'd be kind of like half hour, 45 minute workshops, and then you could pick a couple and then move on. Um, so you have like a workshop, which I imagine would be quite good for like electronics, um, electronics or things like that, where people who don't know about it can go and learn a bit about how to test electronics you know, stupid things like how, you know, how to test computer games or change a plug or, you know, things that people, things that should, you know, don't come naturally to people and have put it off. But if they can see somebody in action doing it or helping them or people can bring their own stuff with them, you know, for advice, that sort of thing. Um, and then maybe another workshop, you know, about clothing or sewing or crafts or how to fix certain things, remove stains, you know, all these sort of stuff. Um, you know, and little kind of workshops, one maybe with antiques, you know, how to spot antiques, what markings to look for, you know, just kind of like things, you know, so over a kind of two hour period, there'll be different workshops, you can kind of move around and learn stuff. And there'll be someone running the work, each workshop and giving tips and advice. And, you know, and then some evening entertainment, of course, for people who want to, if people wanted to stay overnight, you know, if they wanted to stay over, um, you know, we'd put on some evening, you know, whether it be a quiz or, you know, maybe a, a live chat chat. Wouldn't that be good? Like a live tap uh, audience. Uh, Nick's already gone in and said, I hear all that, but where is the after party? Yeah, and you know, how yeah. how big is the bar is coming from Tactical Bite as well? Yeah, um, yeah I, I think that sounds like a fantastic idea, especially when you're talking about, like you said, the, the, the corporate level and, and um, getting representatives from these companies that we have regular dealings with. I mean, when you think about it, if, if, you, if you're someone that uses like a service regularly, normally those companies do want to reach out and and find out about what what you're thinking um you know even when you're just a shopper and you shop on an online website um how many times do, do they send you like an online survey to complete um you know or like when you go to kfc they send you a little survey you can complete and get a little discount off your next order of chicken i had that I actually that was the one survey i filled out recently um but yeah i think that's a really good idea because it's it, it you know they will want to also um reach out i suppose um because it's only in their benefit and especially if we could get like a you know a whole bunch of people together in a room um that would make it i think a, more of an attractive pro attractive proposition for them i mean uh, do they have like minimum kind of um amount of of people that they'd like to see before they no i, do, I don't think so i think as long as you can um show that i've, I've not spoke to the ebay or, or amazon 
uh, reps yet, but I do know they go around and they attend certain conferences and stuff. And you know, and you don't need to pay these people. They they want to come and speak to people. Mm -hmm. You know, so I imagine if they hold an event that size at like a hotel, and you you know, you're talking between 100 and 150 people. Um, you know, and, and in terms of who it's aimed at, I'm guessing not beginners to reselling um, as such. I mean, although it'd be, you know, it'd be an open invite to anyone, but I think the people who are going to get most use of out of it are, you know, business sellers who've been doing it for a little while. And I think these people and companies want to come and speak to, because as you say, it doesn't happen. You know, okay, they do, they run webinars and you can do, there's online forums and that sort of stuff. But to be able to to go and speak, and I think it'd be great for other resellers to meet other resellers. You know, on my schedule of event, I actually have a networking buffet lunch. Oh, ne networking buffet lunch. Networking. That sounds Look at that keyword. <laughs> Um, I think that's definitely something that's piqued a lot of interest. I think a lot of people have actually been talking about it um, since the, the reseller rally happened in the States. But I think, you know, having an event like this, especially with the, the, the having like the corporate um, representatives there and, and, and I think the, the price per head, if that's achievable, would be really good. But I'm guessing that would need um, a fair few people to show up. So, um, it would be really cool to see um, what you know what the chat thinks of it. Um, whether they'd be up to to travelling down to around London. Yeah, I think you were thinking something. Well, I think it has to be. It, I mean, you could speak all day, and people would go on about different locations and why it should be yeah. this part of the country or the other part. It has to be accessible. Um, so if if not London, because I'm thinking the prices in London might be pretty steep for venues it has to be you know within an hour hour and a half reach of sure. of london you know um and it, it's you know i just it's very you know if you've got if you're charging 20 quid a ticket you know and that's 150 people that's you know that's three grand that more than covers venue hire and a buffet lunch i know that from my own experience you know you don't need to you know you just, it, the, the thing that would be hardest to get is people's time you know, people to run the workshops, people to come and spend their time, you know, going on stage and sharing stuff. That's the, and obviously the, the putting of it together and organizing it, you know, that, that, that's the thing that's really going to gonna cost, cost the most money. There's not a lot of cash outlay, really. You know, it's a venue, venue hire, you know, lunch, and that's kind of about it, really. Fair enough. I'd be quite happy to go near London. Um, but yeah, lots of people already coming up with ideas in the chat as well. But um, I think that's a fantastic thing to, to have shared. Uh, it's something that it puts it out there, I suppose. Um, and, you know, if there's enough will, I suppose, behind it, if you see enough um, support for it, then I'm sure it's something that we could. Yeah, maybe people could, people who aren't in the live chat can leave you a comment if it's something they're interested in or share their own views. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to think there'd be, you know, 100 to 200 people that would be interested in this sort of thing if it was the right price sure. and the right location, but maybe, maybe not. So, we, you know, leave to here a comment and, and a thumbs up. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I think think that about covers all the questions I had this, this is you know I hope it wasn't like too um, obvious probably was but you know that they're, they're all the questions that have been asked before but in different ways but it was really cool to have you on on the actual show I really appreciate you you know giving an hour of your day um, to do this um, I hope you guys in the chat really enjoyed it um, if you did obviously press the you know smash the like button um, David McGregor's uh, link for his YouTube channel is in there even though his last video was what like a month or two ago uh, now ages ago, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you can also catch David with ads who's in the chat and um, they do the Kachin Club once a month um, which is uh, quickly turning into a fixture I, I like the fact that it's like news related um, so it's really, it, I, I love the like the little kind of um, the the gossipy news stories, especially those are my favourite to to look forward to. So <laughs> we've got an absolute cracker for the next one. Oh, have we? Excellent. Some, Excellent. A major scoop. Major scoop. Major scoop. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> All right. Um, so for, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Um, and um, we I will see you guys in the next chat. So thanks for watching. See ya.